So this video is to share some tips and tricks I've learned over the years to keep a stock valve train together on a BMW rocker arm motor. Uh, I have owned a couple different rocker arm motor BMWs, um, namely right now is an M30 E28 on Mega Squirt, making around 350 wheel horsepower. And uh, I also work on another one that's an M20 making about the same power and also on Mega Squirt. So um, the first thing that you can do to be nice to a rocker arm BMW engine that has stock valve train is keep the rev limit low. There's an argument on the internet, people argue all day about what is the safest stock rev limit, but really if you keep them under 6,500 RPMs, even the M20, uh, it will save your rocker arms um, significantly. I have seen uh, a friend break one around 6,500, but it was also a turboed M30 with a pretty aggressive rev limiter. And so after seeing that, I have adjusted the way I set up my rev limits to make them a little bit softer, like I will show you here. Another thing that makes your rev limit soft is keeping the soft limit zone uh, pretty large. Uh, so you have, you know, 200 to 250 RPMs of soft limit before it hits the hard, hard limit. So that means in this case, uh, you know, at 6,050 RPMs, it starts to hit this soft limit and slow the motor down until it hits 6,300. So you have this zone where it's, it's kind of, uh, if you could imagine it, it's kind of squishy where the motor, you know, has like a buffer where it can slow down, speed up, slow down, speed up. So when it goes, da, 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 it's that zone where it's, it's stopping and starting again. Um, that on rocker arms helps quite a bit because if that's too low, if you have that around a hundred, it's cycling the uh, power back in very rapidly and can upset the valve train and rocker arms um, in these motors. So that's the first thing I do is just set it up. In my case, I've messed around from 6,300 to 6,100 area and with a turbocharger that's pretty small where I make power, you know, starting at 2,300 RPMs and making positive boost pressure, it, there's plenty of power below this and I don't feel like I need to wring it out um, all that much further. Obviously you can adjust it any way you feel like you need, but that's a, a way that I've found that keeps it safe. Um, we'll just move down in the next area and this will just keep your motor alive, especially in these old cars that have really inaccurate or broken temperature gauges. Um, you can set a coolant temperature based rev limit where, uh, when you turn it on, you set it to coolant temp. Um, there's a map over here and up to, you know, 170 degrees engine temperature. I have my rev limit set at 3,500. And so that might seem strange, but it, when you don't have any gauges in like an inexpensive build or any notification that your coolant temperature is still low, like if your gauge is inaccurate, your temp gauge, this just helps me know that I'm still at a cool temperature and I don't want to hit boost and really ring out the motor until it's up to operating temperature. Um, this, uh, I've had it 61, but you can, you know, set it 6,300 and 6,300 here. Um, but right there, that as soon as you're past 170, it starts to hit the operating temperature where I can hit full revs until it starts to overheat. So I just set it at 215 degrees. It immediately drops off my rev limit to uh, 2,500. So in that case, if I'm really starting to get it hot, it'll just kill power. Essentially it acts like a limp mode and, uh, I'll know right away that this is, I need to let the car cool down, shut it off, you know, check the cooling system. Uh, so that's just a quick way to, to set that up. Um, you can also bypass this. So you're pulling out into traffic or something and you don't want that low limit when it's cold. Uh, you can just set the rev limit bypass to 90% throttle. So if you just floor it all the way to 100% throttle, it actually bypasses this system and you're able to get your full rev range. Uh, moving along, 
Um, with the spark retard, using progressive retard as opposed to fixed angle will also help save the, the rocker arms from snapping. That means you set a retard, a maximum amount of retard that the rev limiter will use to pull power from the motor as it sits on the rev limiter. And in this hysteresis zone, it will slowly progressively pull more timing up to 10 degrees. So um, instead of just immediately hitting the soft limit and pulling 10 degrees, it pulls like, you know, two, four, six, eight, slowly up to that point. And it just doesn't stop the motor as aggressively and put shock loads on your valve train. Um, the next thing you can do is enable uh, spark cut rev limiting. And if you only have spark cut, it's actually pretty aggressive because you'll have um, residual fuel in the motor. And when the rev limiter hits its hard limit and then drops back down and kicks on again, it shoots a big flame, uh, a really hard hitting flame that can make pressure to upset your exhaust valves and your rocker rocker arms and drive and valve train. So you want enable fuel cut limiting as well as spark cut. So it uses a combination of cutting spark and cutting fuel uh, to slow down the motor. It's, it's a lot softer than just spark cut. Um, spark cut limiting, you know, you see those on like a lot of those guys that do hardcore uh, like drag racing and stuff like that in like two JZs, it just shoots a huge flame between shifts. It's just spark cut. And in racing applications, you want the fuel cut limiting off because the extra fuel cools the motor. So in between the ignition events, when it cuts ignition on the limiter, you're still getting cool fuel that is wasted, but it's it is help cooling down the intake and exhaust valve and everything else in there. Um, but to save your motor in a stock motor application like this, uh, it's easiest to just leave both of those on. Progressive fuel cut, you do not want this on if you have batch fuel uh, injection like I do on this micro squirt. Um, it slowly takes out fuel, but at risk of it going lean, um, because it doesn't have control over every individual injector, um, I just have that left off. But uh, that's really it. The, the basis of this is that uh, the rocker arms don't like abrupt changes in velocity. So, you know, you're hitting the rev limiter really hard, really fast, or you have big explosions in the exhaust sending pressure back on the exhaust valves and upsetting the valve train. Um, it's, it's really hard on stuff. So this is for stock motors. Obviously, if you have any upgrades in your valve train, if you upgrade rocker arms and everything else, it completely changes. But if you're just doing like a, an easy build on one of these old motors and just want to have fun with it, this is a way to kind of keep it alive. And uh, I hope that helps you guys out. Uh, let me know in the comments if you have any questions or if uh, this worked out for you or what your experience has been with it. Thank you.